Hola, good morning. We made it safe yesterday. Broke down a few more times, but nothing dramatic. Got to this fancy, fancy ass place right here. Slept like shit, it's too fancy for my back. Day number two of California trip, down here in Auburn, California. Sun's out, I haven't seen the sun in like three months up in Washington. Ooh, 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 first things first, we decided for breakfast is cold brew. And the great thing about this fancy ass place, as Eldad calls it, the whole reason I planned it this way is because there is a cold brew factory right next door. Perfect. Starbucks cold brew. I could go there for a second. That was crazy. The whole goal is we're down here working on the land speed racing documentary. The uh, working title right now is uh, it's Rockets and Titans, and it's about the world's fastest motorcycle. There's three motorcycles in the world that are capable of going after those speeds. We're down here in Grass Valley working for a few days with these guys at their race shop uh, as they prepare to take their race program to Australia. I think Dennis is one of my favorite characters in this whole entire documentary. Pretty much a legend in the uh, the sport of motorcycle land speed racing. He's been doing it since the 60s and the 70s. He set his first land speed record when he was like 23 years old. And he's held the record four different times. So the amount of stories the guy has to, to tell. He's like the perfect character for a movie like this. Oh, oh hey there Dennis. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing good? Good. How you doing? Good. How you doing? Good. Good. Uh, Ooh. Your lunch, uh, mm. <clears throat> so, where, so where are we headed, Dennis? Mexican food. Uh, we're about to get some lunch at Dennis's favorite Mexican food restaurant here in uh, Grass Valley. Yeah, we're getting it right now. I've been here a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you stopped me before, right? Then was a kind of a nobleman in a way. Would take a rowboat. Can I have some iced tea, please? Hmm? If we're not rolling, we can, yeah, we can assist. Party it up. I've never been a Scotch guy. Never leave home without it. Hey, what? If you guys will help me, we can get this pallet. We put it through the bounce. Oh. Drink some whiskey, talk story, and have a pallet fire. These are exactly the situations that we like to get ourselves in when it comes to working with these guys on these documentaries. You know, we hang out, we BS, we have a good time. You know, becoming friends with the subjects, it's like a great opportunity to really get them to open up. It's two o'clock. What time is whiskey 30? Anytime. <laughs> No shit. We feel comfortable with them, they feel comfortable with us. That's an important way to getting people to, you know, draw out their true feelings and their true emotions. They gotta trust who's behind the camera. So it's been good. I love sitting around talking with Dennis and hearing story. You know, it's like sitting around on our front porch with grandpa and hearing uh, stories of the old times of racing and stuff like that. This is the last run we made in Australia. Rocky at the wheel. But there's more to that story. Come here, I'll show you. Uh. That's the piston and the connecting rod. <laughs> this is a tire that exploded at 450 miles an hour. The stories that this guy's got, the places this guy's been, the knowledge that he's gained over the years, a true racing hero. I got a real good chance of breaking this land speed record. Her making this step where she's gonna be a fucking quarterback, she's gonna be famous, way famous. And that's what that girl wants. And uh, like I said, that about the sport, land speed racing is uh, it's very unique in the way that uh, you know a NASCAR hero you'd see some multi-million dollar race shop or something like that. But uh, 
This is where it all happens, right here, down on the farm. It's uh, grassroots racing at its finest. So it would expose. But if you put one, uh, we're getting down to it now. I mean, these guys are going for 400 miles an hour. The fastest this bike's ever gone is 367 miles an hour. Heldot's in here in the production van getting things all set up for today. He's also got a laptop set up and ingesting footage so as cards get filled up on the red camera they come directly here and get put on a hard drive. You're always running around with the camera pointing at people, slowing them down. People try to work. God, you're still here. I, I, like I said, I'm trying to work, man. Inside the production van, it's great to have a vehicle that is uh, secure. It's got everything like organized, shelves, drawers. We've got a whole desktop here, auxiliary battery system, charging system set up. Super nice to have this uh, set up to be able to work out of. Makes things pretty freaking sweet. Nineteen when we started doing this. Yeah. Elky's still in there, <laughs> right? Yep. And get through the mile in way less than between nine and ten seconds. I'm an old man. It's hard to do this now. Oh yeah, some people know who you are. There's accolade. Look down and say, well, we got the record for such and such and so. We could come home with a record that's very significant. That, that kind of covered a lot of what I felt like I wanted to... Uh... Okay. It's all hands on deck for the race team. These guys are going for the world's fastest motorcycle land speed record, and there's a lot, a lot that goes into it. Basically what's gotta happen is the whole entire race program's gotta get uh, loaded into the trailer. And this trailer you see right behind me was specifically built to fit right into a 40 foot shipping container, and that thing's gonna spend uh, like 30 days on a boat going across the ocean. So everything's gotta be inventoried, everything's gotta be checked off. These guys are running around like crazy, making sure everything's loaded, prepped, and ready to go, because this is their last chance. It uh, make, makes things exciting, it's, uh, it's good for the film. Today's choice of weapon is going to be, for the most part, uh, the gimbal. The gimbal is awesome for capturing movement, just gives you ultra smooth uh, movement as the camera moves through a situation like this, whether it's shop or following the guys packing up gear and stuff. So we're going to be running the Red Epic on the Movi Pro and it'll probably live on that for most of the day. We'll get this thing set up so we can use it today. Yo. What's going on, man? Not much. We're just here in the race shop. It's good. It's cool to see the operation going on. Getting in the middle of it, getting some action. It's cool. We've hung out with these guys enough that they don't mind when I point the camera right in their face and bug them. It makes for good, uh, good storytelling right there when they're comfortable with the camera and the camera crew. So it's cool. I'm digging it. Love this racing stuff. It's good. This guy's been taking inventory, got everything piloted into the trailer. Now everything's going into the trailer. Every bit, part, gas can, wire, all gets inventory and put into the trailer. Cool footage. Right on. Well, that was a good day's worth of filming right there. I know all of you guys have been talking about wanting to see some behind the scenes stuff of what we do on a daily basis as Emanate Films. That doesn't get any more behind the scenes right there. You guys should go over there and check out uh, our YouTube channel on that, Emanate Films. If we're talking adventure, this team going to Australia to do some land speed racing, that's what I call adventure. I hope everybody's doing good out there. Thank you all of you subscribers for sticking on board with us. New subscribers coming on board, I hope you're enjoying the channel. Give us your guys' feedback, leave comments, let us know what you're thinking of the channel. Give us a like. Guys, peace out, keep on trucking.